Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinami Namaste Saraswati Deve Karavati Pracharine Nirvisesha Shunyavati Paschita Vishadharine Jayashti Krishna Chaitanya Namo Nityananda Kanti Priyatve Tadada Dare Srivastati Gaurav Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Radha 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 Jaya Radha Krishna Radha Krishna Radha Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Jaya Jaya Prabhupada, 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 Prabhupada,
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Shalina Mataji with us still. Hare Krishna, Paramatma Prabhu. Hare Krishna Ji. You can hear me. Shalina Mataji gone and we lost her. Uh, it looks like we lost her, Mataji. Yeah. Okay, can you read for us, please, Prabhu? Okay, I was born in the darkest ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisances unto him. When will Stila Rupa goes from my power part, who has established within this material world the mission to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya, give me shelter under his lotus feet? I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master and unto the feet of all Vaishnavas. I offer my respectful obeisances unto, still, unto the lotus feet of Stila Rupa Goswami, along with his elder brother Sanatana Goswami, as well as Raguna Dasa and Raguna Rupacha, Gopala Bhatta and Srila Jiva Goswami. I offer my respectful obeisances to Lord Krishna Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda, along with Advaita Acharya, Gajara, Srivas, and other associates. I offer my respectful obeisances to Srimati Radharani and Sri Krishna along with their associates, Jiralita and Vishaka. Oh, my dear Krishna, you are the friend of the distress and the source of creation. You are the master of the gopis and the lover of Radharani. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respects to Radharani, whose bodily complexion is like molten gold and who is the queen of Vrindavan. You are the daughter of King Vishabani and you are very dear to Lord Krishna. I offer my respectful obeisances unto all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord, they can fulfill the desires of everyone, just like desire trees, and they are full of compassion for the fallen souls. I offer my, um, I offer my obeisances to Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vas, and all others in the line of devotion. Thank you, Madhaji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen now. We'll start from uh, verse number 16, chapter 4. Next week, I would like for us to have a discussion session. So I'm going to give you all today, the end of this class, uh, you know, a few topics. Maybe you all can read through it during the week and we can discuss it next week. What do you all think about that? So you're okay with that. Paramatma Prabhu, are you okay with that? A lot of us are not present here, so uh, I'll, put, I'll put it out in group. Are you okay with that? Okay, Ranika, Manji, Manji, yes, that's fine. Yeah, Manji, Veronica, you. Madhuri, Mataji, you're happy with that? Yes, Mataji. In trouble? Um, just from what, if you feel comfortable, then we can do that. Hare, Hare Krishna, you were breaking up. I didn't hear something about next week and then you broke up. Um, yeah, I said that next week I'd like to, uh, at the end of this class, I'd like to give you all a few topics that we can discuss next week based on what we've covered so far. I think that will be quite nice. It'll be a nice recap and uh, make it nice and interactive. For those of us who have missed quite a few lessons, uh, newcomers, it's okay if you want to be excused, not a problem. Yeah. That chapter 16 is, I mean, uh, verse 16, am I right? Yeah. Yes, lovely. Okay, and, and let's go with verse 16. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Kim Karma, Kim Makarmeti, Kavayopi at Atra Mohitaha, Tate Karma Pravakshyami, Yajknapa Moksha Se Shubhat, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Krishna goes on to say here, even 
The intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction. Now I shall explain to you what action is, knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune. I just feel that we have read this verse. Yes, we have. Tom, we've read this verse last week, right? We spoke about the... Veronica, were you here last week? Yes, we are on yeah, six seventeen now. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, it doesn't matter. No one wanted us to read the verse. The next verse. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Karmanu hi api bodhavyam, bodhavyam cha vikarmanaha, a karmanas cha bodhavyam, ga, ga, gahana karmano gatihi, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna goes on to say, The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. All right. So, Srila Prabhupada's purport. If one is serious about liberation from material bondage, one has to understand the distinctions between action, inaction, and unauthorized actions. One has to apply oneself to such an analysis of action, reaction, and perverted actions because it is very difficult, a very difficult subject matter. To understand Krishna consciousness and action according to its modes, one has to learn one's relationship with the Supreme. That is, one has to learn perfect. One who has learned perfectly knows that every living entity is an eternal servitor of the Lord and that consequently, one has to act in Krishna consciousness. The entire Bhagavad Gita is directed toward this conclusion. Any other conclusions against this consciousness and its attendant actions are vikalmas or prohibited actions. To understand all this, one has to associate with, with authorities in Krishna consciousness and learn the secret from them. This is as good as learning from the Lord directly. Otherwise, even the most intelligent persons are, will be bewildered. So this is very strong here, what Krishna is saying. He's breaking it up. He says there's three categories here, right? We have to understand what action is, what inaction is, and most importantly, what is forbidden action. So there's three types here. Now the forbidden action, Prabhupada explains to us here in the purport, forbidden actions will be actions against Krishna consciousness, sinful actions. And that kind of action, is, are called, actions are called vikarmas. Vikarmas, not wanted action. We spoke previously about a karma as well, which is an ideal platform of activity. Because that means you are not attached, a karma, without attachment to the action. We need to act how? In, uh, in Krishna consciousness, in God consciousness. But we need to sacrifice the fruits of those results and then becomes a karma. That's just a little bit more, right? So, um, here Krishna, Prabhupada says, to understand Krishna consciousness and action according to its modes. What are the three modes we discussed last week? Veronica Mataji? Just want to brief everyone. What are the three modes we spoke about last week? Hello, Veronica Mataji? Mode of uh, passion, goodness, yes. and uh, mode of this, goodness, passion, and ignorance. Yes, those are the three modes. So as we act, we are placed accordingly into each mode, right? Now, this action of Vikarma here that Prabhupada is talking about, where you act against Krishna consciousness, that mode would be, that would be governed by the mode of ignorance, because it would be sinful activity. Okay, next 
first, verse number 18. Veronica, Matthew, do you want to read this verse? Verse 18. Paramatma Prabhu, please read for us. Hare Krishna Maharaj. You can read and from the one. Sanskrit. Read. Read from the Sanskrit. Okay. Karmani akarma ya pasyat akarmani cha karma ya sabudimam manus yeshu sayukta krishna karma krit. One who sees inaction in, in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men. And he is the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. Purpose by his divine grace is the Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A person acting in Krishna consciousness is naturally free from the bonds of karma. His activities are all performed for Krishna. Therefore, he does not enjoy or suffer any of the effects of work. Consequently, he is an intelligent in human society, even though he is engaged in all sorts of activities for Krishna. Our karma means without reaction to work. The impersonalist seizes fruitive activities out of fear so that the resultant action may not be a stumbling block on the path of self-realization. But the personalist knows rightly his position as the eternal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he engages himself in the activities of Krishna consciousness. Because everything is done for Krishna, he enjoys only transcendental happiness in the discharge of, of this service. Those who are engaged in this process are known to be without desire for personal sense gratification. The sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work. Thank you, Madhuri Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. Yeah, the sense of eternal servitorship to Krishna makes one immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work. So you don't get reactions from that work. Right? Um, Servitorship, we said, is one of the four loving uh, relationships that we can have with the Lord. Right? Where we worship the Lord in awe and reverence, where the Lord is the master and we are servants. And we quoted an example from scripture being like the service of Hanumanji to Lord Ramachandra. Okay. Okay. Now, the whole point here, Prabhupada is saying, that is that we've got to act in Krishna consciousness. We've got to act in God consciousness. We've got to be wary of our activity. And when we act for God, when we act for Krishna, when we are engaged in devotional service, in other words, in devotional activities, then we are protected. Because Prabhupada is saying here that what happens when a person is acting in Krishna consciousness? He is naturally freed from the bonds of karma. And we know that when we are freed from the bonds of karma, then we are freed from the bonds of material entanglement. And that is our goal, to free ourselves from this material bondage. The more we free ourselves from material bondage, the more we attach ourselves to spiritual life. And we will advance and progress and reach our destination much sooner. Okay, so this is the whole idea. Now, this chapter is entitled Transcendental Knowledge. Krishna is now giving Arjuna this knowledge that he would, uh, would assist him in advancing rapidly in spiritual life. He's giving him the secrets, in other words, all the secrets that one would, would need to advance spiritually and to reach their eternal goal being, being Goloka Vrindavan, being eternal. Um, supreme, uh, being uh, an eternal servant to the Lord, establishing his natural position. Okay, um, Dean Prabhu, I just want to stop here and ask you you're familiar with the background to Bhagavad Gita, are you? Are you? Hare Krishna, Dean Prabhu? Uh, Hare Krishna, yes, uh, I, I, yeah. I am funny. It's been about, I uh, uh, went over it, I think about two years ago. <laughs> I read over it for the very first time. So I realized there's quite a lot of questions that uh, that has to be, uh, that a lot of things that I didn't fully understand 100%. So 
So I've been trying to attend as many classes as I can in order to understand it a lot better. Okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, the, yeah, yeah, sorry, Mataji, we are just like breaking up from time to time. Okay, all right. I'm hoping that uh, the wife stabilizes. Uh, yeah. Try and listen to uh, sorry, the you were saying recorded classes, the previous classes that we recorded from, from the beginning. Try and listen to the classes that we've recorded from the beginning, if you can. Oh, okay. Uh, is it a way, where is it available on on YouTube? Um, okay, Paramatma Prabhu, will you get in touch with Dean Prabhu after the class and let him know, let him know where it's saved? Just direct him a little okay. bit, and then it's, on the, follow. it's on that uh, WhatsApp group we have. We have oh, the WhatsApp oh. group on Bhagavad Gita. Are you on it, Prabhu? Yeah, I, I, I am on. The, yeah, we're sharing the, it there. Is that the way? Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. But uh, I came in quite Bhagavad late, Gita, so I wouldn't yeah. have had. I wouldn't have had the first, the, some chapter okay. one to three, I think. All it's right. only and from chapter Dean, four. That, that's fine. Dean Prabhu, I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions during the week outside this uh, Sunday platform. And I'm more than okay. happy to uh, even go through it with you briefly in summary on over two or three lessons, if you'd like. And you can just let me know right after the class. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. I appreciate it. All yes. right. No problem. Hare Krishna. Okay. Hare Krishna. Let me just mute you. Right, so we finished 18, 19. Veronica Mataji, are you back? Yeah, you want to okay. read this first? Okay. Yes, yeah, okay, no problem. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama, Rama, Hare Hare. <clears throat> yes, yes, Hare Samarambha. Kama Shanka Pavarchita. Nagi Dagdakal Manam Tam 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 Ahuha Panditam Buddha Buddha. One is understood to be in full knowledge whose every endeavor is to is devoid of desire for sense gratification. He is said by sages to be a worker for whom the reactions of work have been burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge. Purpose by Srila Prabhupada. Only a person in full knowledge can understand the activities of a person in Krishna conscious, consciousness because a person in Krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory propensities. It is to be understood that he has burnt up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position as the internal servitor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He is actually learned who has attained to such perfection of knowledge. Development of this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the Lord is compared to fire. Such a fire, once kindled, can burn up all kinds of reactions to work. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. So this fire of knowledge can burn up reactions to uh, all kinds of work. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of? God consciousness of Krishna consciousness. So therefore, Krishna is saying here that we have to, it has to be understood in what? Full knowledge. And we have to endeavor to get rid of sense gratification. And how do we get rid of sense gratification? By engaging in devotional service. Everything comes back to the same point. How? Krishna says, do X, Y, and Z. Reach this destination, whatever, whatever, whatever. And it boils back down to the same point. How? How is to do devotional service? Why do we do, uh, engage in devotional service? To purify ourselves, to purify our consciousness, to purify our senses, and to establish that relationship with Krishna. We have to establish that relationship. We can establish relationships by serving. By serving a person, you grow closer to the person. You become more mindful of the person's needs. You, you become... Um, what, what forms and strengthens is remembrance. If you're serving a person continuously every day, you remember the person every day. Correct. Correct. So, likewise, if we serve the Supreme Lord on a daily basis, then we will be training our memory to remember the Lord. And the highest, um, or rather, the, the most important lesson the most important point rather 
when we are leaving our body is to think of the Lord. Because Krishna says, those who think of me, come to me. Those who worship me, come to me. So when you leave your body, if you are thinking of Krishna, you will go to Krishna. And then you will end the cycle of birth and death. This material bondage will then be broken. Right. Remember, we are here because of all our past karmas, because of our desire to be here. It was our desire to enjoy independently from Krishna. It was our desire to enjoy material life and to enjoy our senses. So out of our own desire, Krishna has sent us here. And we have karmas that we have to work out from past deeds as well. And every time we live in different bodies, we are creating more karmas by losing sight of Krishna consciousness. But the minute you start this process of Krishna consciousness, your heart starts getting purified. And you start training your mind and your heart and, and your memory. And in this process, you can reach your final goal. Srila Prabhupada said, it is not impossible. It is not impossible to go back home, back to God. Just follow the four regulated principles, do the chanting, engage in devotional service. So this, this material world is, is a prison house, not like a prison house. It is a prison house. It's a bondage place. We are bound here. So let's talk about, uh, use an analogy of uh, a prison. Right? We know we've got uh, people who have done sinful activities, murders and committed serious offenses and crimes, they get put into prison. They serve a sentence for, sentence for a number of years. Yes. And then they promise that they will never do it again. So they get out of prison. They get out of prison, but because in their heart, they've got that proclivity to sin. It is so deep-rooted within them. They still keep that prison with that desire. They go out and they repeat the same offense. What happens to such a person? He gets imprisoned again. He gets put back into prison. Likewise with us. We are born into this material world. And some of us might say, okay, when, when, when a living entity, a human child is born, before it is born, when it is in the state of, uh, in the mother's womb, still as a fetus, it prays to Krishna. It prays very, very sincerely and says to Krishna, oh, please, Lord, release me from this prison because it's such an uncomfortable place, right? The unborn child goes through a lot of um, physical torture whilst in the womb of the mother. And at that point, he remembers all his past activities at that point. And he regrets. This is all in the Gadot Quran. He regrets. And he says, he begs and he prays and says to Krishna, I promise you in this next lifetime, I will utilize my human life form to, um, to worship you, to gain spiritual transcendental knowledge, to serve you, to serve your devotees. And I will qualify that life and come back to you because I don't want to go through this painful uh, cycle of birth and death again. But what happens to that child when he is born? He forgets. He forgets everything. He forgets everything. And the cycle of life starts again. again. And a lot of uh, people, depending on the past karma, right? Devotees are fortunate. Y'all are sitting here in this class, y'all are fortunate. Clearly, y'all have reached a certain level in your past life to have picked up on Krishna consciousness again and, and, and continue on that path, on that advancement in Krishna consciousness. You get some people who are born in families where they don't even have um, the facility to practice and to worship the Lord. Some are born into families where There's such abuse of various kinds. We read this in the newspapers. It's all because of past karma. And then they don't get this facility, this platform to practice Krishna consciousness, right? That's because of their own desires. So the ones who remember, at least they are making, they are making progress. 
and they are fulfilling their promise that they made whilst in the womb of the mother. But those who don't, what happens? And those who don't qualify their lives, what happens? They come back into this world, just like the prisoner who has escaped and been bailed out of prison or served his sentence. When he goes out and commits sin again, what happens? He comes back. He goes back to the prison. Likewise, us, when we leave this, this cage, this body, we are embodied souls, right? We are embodied. We are in this body. When we leave this body, this prison house in here, we go away. And what happens? If we leave with that desire, what happens? We put back into the prison house in this material world in a body because we are desiring again. Therefore, it is so important here, Prabhupada is saying, to gain this full knowledge and understand the activities of a person in Krishna consciousness. This transcendental knowledge is important because we are going to be training ourselves, training the mind to, for what? For our final examination. Final examination being the point where you're going to leave this body. Because at that point, you don't want to have any material desire. Because if you leave with that material desire, like the prisoner left the prison house with some sort of desire in his heart to do sinful activities again, he went back into the prison. So if we leave with desires, good or bad, we're going to come back, come back to, to reap or fulfill those desires. That's what it is in a nutshell. Okay. Verse number 20. Anybody else wants to read here? Madri Mataji, you want to read? No. I'm Not sorry. today, Mataji. Are you yes. reading? I, I didn't uh, carry my glasses. And I'm happy. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, number so, 20. Yeah. Verse 20. I can't read because I haven't carried my glasses. Okay, that's fine. Let me read the verse. They're not a problem. We say 20. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Tyakva Karma, Palas. Pala Sangam, Nitya Tripto Nirashraya, Karmani Api Pravritopi, Naiva Kinchit Karotisa, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Abandoning all attachment to the results of his activities, even satisfied and independent, he performs no furtive action although engaged in all kinds of undertakings. So how? How are you not attached? By abandoning attachment to the results. Then Srila Prabhupada explains in his report, this freedom from the bondage of actions is possible only in Krishna consciousness. When one is doing everything for Krishna. A Krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, he has no attraction for the results of action. He is not even attached to his personal maintenance for everything he is left to Krishna. Nor is he anxious to secure things, nor to protect things already in his possession. He does, does his duty to the best of his ability and leaves everything to Krishna. Such an unattached person is always free from the resultant reactions of good and bad. It is as though he were not doing anything. This is the sign of a karma, or actions without fruitive reactions. Any other action, therefore, devoid of Krishna consciousness, is binding upon the worker, and that is the real aspect of the karma, as explained herein before. They all understand that, that self-explanatory, right? Right. So to be free from bondage, we act for Krishna. Now, when anybody acts out of love, we, we know love is unconditional. We know that love is unconditional. When you love somebody, you do something, you don't expect anything in return. A mother raises her baby, raises her child. She feeds her child. She ch changes his nappies. 
She clothes him, she educates him. She teaches him everything, not with expectation that, that I have done this for you, my child. Now I expect for you to pay me back. Yeah. Or I expect for you to do all the other chores in the house when once you grow up. A mother doesn't do that because she loves the child. Love is unconditional. This is what is saying here. A Krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he has no attraction for the results of action. He's not expecting anything in return. Prabhupada said, we must not do business with the Lord. We don't have a business relationship with our creator. Ask, ask, ask. My Lord, I'm taking a vow because now I want to um, pass my exam. I want my children to pass the exams. I will take a vow if they pass the exam distinctions, then my Lord, I will do such and such and such a prayer or ritual for you, to you. That is called a business dealing. That's not love. That is conditional. As soon as there's a condition attached to it, it's no longer love. It's not pure, it's tainted. But having said that, don't get despondent. Having said, having said that, Krishna said that four kinds of people approach him and he is so merciful that he accepts all four kinds of those people whom he calls devotees. The one in distress, you go and pour your heart out to Krishna and cry to him. The person in distress, he accepts. The person who comes out of inquiry, he wants to know. He's got an inquiring mind. He's seeking knowledge. Krishna accepts. A person who comes out of uh, curiosity, inquiring mind. Um, yeah, so a person who comes out of pure love and devotion, also Krishna accepts. Of course, that's uh, the topmost form of uh, loving exchange with the Lord. Isn't it? Because it's pure. You're not asking him for anything in return. So Krishna is so merciful that he accepts. But remember, when you attach a condition to it, then it is not so pure anymore, isn't it? It's business. If you go to the uh, store, if you engage an attorney or an accountant in a service, you will have that relationship for as long as that transaction is in effect. Correct. You approach me to draw up your financial statements and engage me in a service. We'll sign an engagement, right? We'll enter an engagement. And when my service is uh, done, you leave. And the relationship ends. Maybe you may want it again the following year and say, please, I'd, I'd like for you to do my audit again next year. And then we engage again in a new uh, transaction. Isn't it? But love? That's not how you behave with a loved one. That becomes impersonal. Business relationship is a little bit impersonal, right? So if you want to not to lose sight of your goal of going back home to God here, you want to remember Krishna even at the time of death and in the cycle of birth and death, then we, it's best we engage ourselves in pure love uh, to, to the Lord in uh, devotional service. Act in Krishna consciousness and then it will free us from this. Right? So you have to abandon all attachment to results of activities. How? How? By, by, by acting in Krishna consciousness. Right, our next verse is number 21. Um, okay, I think we can finish it. Verse number 21. Anybody else wants to read Paramatma Prabhu? Thank you, Samaji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh, verse 21. Nirashir Yata Chitamaha Tyakta Sarva Parikraha Sariram Kevalam Karma Kurvan Nat. No, no, not he, Kilbisham. Such a man understanding, such a man, such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence, perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions, and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by sinful reactions. Prabhupada by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. A Krishna conscious person does not expect good or bad results in his activities. 
His mind and intelligence are fully controlled. He knows that because he is part and parcel of the Supreme, the part played by him as a part and parcel of the whole is not his own activity, but is only being done through him by the Supreme. When the hand moves, it does not move out of his own accord, but by the, the endeavor of the whole body. The Krishna conscious person is always dovetailed with the Supreme desire, for he has no desire for personal sense gratification. He moves exactly like a part of a machine. As a machine part requires oiling and cleaning for maintenance, so a Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work just to remain fit for action in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. He is therefore immune to all the reactions of his endeavors. Like an animal, he has no proprietorship even over his own body. A cruel proprietor of an animal sometimes kills the animal in his possession, yet the animal does not protest, nor does it have any real independence. A Krishna conscious person fully engaged in self-realization has very little time to falsely possess any material object. For maintaining body and soul, he does not require unfair means of accumulating money. He does not, therefore, become contaminated by such material sense. He is free from all reactions to his actions. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Such a man of understanding acts with his mind and intelligence perfectly controlled. He gives up all senses of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by simple reactions. Krishna is saying how we should be. But a very uh, nice analogy Prabhupada has given us here in his purport, where he says that as a machine part requires oiling and cleaning for maintenance, so a Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work, just to remain fit for action in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So we maintain this machine. What's this machine? Our machine is this body. Why do we maintain this uh, machine, this body? So we can act in Krishna consciousness. Why? So we can be fit for action in transcendental loving service. That's why we need to maintain this body. It does not mean that we need, we must neglect this body. We cannot neglect this body. This is the body is our, our tool. The working senses are our tools to act in Krishna consciousness. So by no means should we neglect the body. What we're saying here is that we should not be materialist, too materialistically inclined to understand what the purpose of this body is. Okay. We should not punish this body in any way as well because this body does not belong to us. Even this body belongs to Krishna. Everything belongs to Krishna. So this body as well belongs to him. Therefore, we're meant to keep it cleansed. Both, both internally and externally. We meant to use it in his service. Okay. But also, you know, a Krishna conscious person that uses everything in Krishna's service. Everything. He'll use everything. His groceries in his house is for Krishna because he cooks and he offers it to the Lord. His house itself is Krishna because he is Krishna's because. He says that Krishna owns everything. Krishna is a proprietor. He will keep an altar in his house and worship Krishna and say, I am here serving Krishna. This is now Krishna's temple. Everything is Krishna. So the body too is Krishna's. When Vaishnavas or devotees, after they bathe, they do these 12 markings on their bodies with tilak. It's called Vaishnava tilak. The one you'll see Hare Krishna people use on their forehead, right? And which would... It's, there's 12 parts of the body that's marked. And with each marking, you say a mantra. And what are you saying? You are saying that, Lord, I am marking this body because this body is your, te your temple. Why is it the Lord's temple? Because the Lord resides within your heart as Paramatma. Just you are residing in the heart as a soul. And the super soul is residing right next door to you in your heart. Therefore, you would have heard people say, do not ever cross somebody, cross over somebody's leg or hand or body when they are sitting on the floor. Yes, we say it's manners. The common man would say it's manners, it's, it's disrespectful, which it is. But why is it disrespectful? Because you need to see and recognize that the Lord is seated in the hearts of, of every living entity. So to cross 
over somebody means that you're crossing over the Lord. Therefore, it is disrespectful. And we need to take care of our appearance as well. Because even when we dress, we should be dressing for Krishna. We go to the temple and we adorn ourselves for who? Because we are going to see the Lord. You know, sometimes people go, a lot of us, we go out, we get invited, family functions. relatives have a wedding or birthday party and we attend we attend out of courtesy out of love out of respect whatever the reason may be now when you go to a wedding or to somebody's birthday party what would you do what would you wear madri mataji how would you dress if you go to somebody's wedding you dress up properly you take out a nice fine sari madri yes. mataji you would yes. that Yes. yes. Why? Why would you do that? It's also respect. We respect our body also. Yes. And we are we dressing for the occasion. For the occasion. That's it. The occasion being whatever you invited to, right? Okay. So let yes. me leave you and hold you with that thought. Right. Right. Veronica Mataji, you you invited to somebody's birthday party. How would you yes. dress? Would you put um, some sort of effort into your dressing? Yes, we will because obviously, will. you know. Yes, we will because we will. We will just why? Up, um, I need you to tell me why. Meekly, because to respect the host. Yes. Yeah. And to yes. respect the host, to respect the occasion. Yes. Okay. And. Okay. All right. Nice. So you hold that thought there, right? Anybody else? Dean Prabhu, what about you? Would you dress up yeah. to go out to an occasion? You would. For the same yeah, reasons? We, we, yes, for the same reasons. We generally try to find out what, what the team or if, they, if there's a team or what mm. dress is expected. So just to respect the people that are inviting us to show them that kind of respect. So therefore, we will dress up accordingly. You know, yes. and plus, yeah. Plus, you don't want to go out there feeling like a hardball. So, <laughs> so uh, yes. that's why you try to dress correctly. Yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Paramatma Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Yeah, I'm trying to dress up neatly. Trying to yeah. fit in. Difficult sometimes. To fit in, to fit in yeah. You know? very, very difficult. So, because they yeah. say we're not the body. So if you're not the body, then you start thinking now, should you dress up or not? What do you think? Should you dress no, yeah, up? Yeah, you have to try and fit in, Mother. That's the difficulty. You know? Of course you have to public. dress up. You're not this body. You know you're not this yeah. body. But this body is also a temple, isn't it? The temple of who? Yeah, of Krishna. Isn't it? So you must look after this temple inside out. Why are you not looking after this temple? You have to. You say it's a temple and you're decorating your body with pillar. Look after the temple. Bharti, Mataji, yes, Prabhu. Would you all dress up when you all go out? Yeah, I think that goes without saying. Yes. I think right. uh, you have to respect the function and uh, mm -hmm. the occasion by uh, showing the people that you you dare to celebrate uh, a wedding uh -huh. as for your example. So, yeah, you will make an extra effort to look, uh, to dress and, up a little bit. Okay, yeah. So we all have a similar idea, right? 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 Okay. Now, my point, the point I've been trying to drive here is this. When you go to the temple, you should also dress up. Why should you not dress up when you go to the temple? Is the person seated on the altar less important than the person who's hosting that party that you went to? Less important than the couple that were getting married? Is he? Is he? Who is the person standing upon that altar? Just marble? Just brass? Just stone? Where is he? Veronica Mataji? Sorry, I didn't I didn't hear you break you broke up. I said when you when, when, when we go to a party or a wedding, mm -hmm. we respect yeah. the occasion, we respect the host, and out of respect, we dress up nicely to fit into the function. Because that host, the, the bridal couple, are important people. Yes. The person yes. whose birthday party is. 
Yes. He's an important person. So the person yeah, at the temple, is yeah. he not important? Who's standing on that altar? Marble? Brass? No. Who's standing on that altar? Bhagwan. Yes. The living God. So, correct. So, you have to dress for Krishna. Isn't so? Correct. I'm not saying go elaborate. Attaching yourself to material life. Be neat. Be clean. Be presentable. And no, the Krishna is this most important person. You should go there. It's such a jovial spirit. I am seeing Krishna today. Today I'm going to the Monday to the temple, and I'm going to do some sort of devotional service. For who? For the pleasure of Krishna. And I'm going to dress appropriately for the pleasure of Krishna. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It does make sense. It does, huh? Yeah. Just remember. He is not less important than that function, the person hosted that function that you were invited to. I'm not saying put on your brightest red sari now and go stand in the temple with a whole lot of gold jewelry. But I'm saying it's okay to make an effort for Krishna. You should make an effort for Krishna because he's not an ordinary person. The gopis are so beautifully adorned all the time. The pleasure of Krishna. Isn't it? Mm. Okay, that's quite an important point. You should always be neatly attired and nicely attired for Krishna. Okay, let's go one more verse and then we can conclude today's class. Number 22. Hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Yadrichalabha Santushto, Dan. That one fear, one part it of him, Sadaha, Samaha, sit up a sit houcher, with papina nip at the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He who is satisfied with gain, which comes of his own accord, who is free from duality, and who knows, who does not, not envy, who is steady in both success and failure, is never entangled, although performing actions. So Prabhupada says, he explains, a Krishna conscious person does not make much endeavor even to maintain his body. He is satisfied with the gains which are obtained of their own accord. He neither begs nor borrows, but he labors honestly as far as in his power and he is satisfied with whatever is obtained by his own honest labor so we go to work spoke about this before as well we have to work to maintain his body we have to work to provide for our families but we've got to work in krishna consciousness knowing that whatever money we make from that employment we are engaging in krishna's service then in that way you work honestly and obtain whatever you get and be happy right Prabhupada further says he therefore, he is therefore independent in his livelihood. He does not allow anyone's service to hamper his own service in Krishna consciousness. However, for the service of the Lord, he can participate in any kind of action without being disturbed by the duality of the material world. The duality of the material world is felt in terms of heat and cold or misery and happiness. A Krishna conscious person is above duality because he does not hesitate to act in a way for the satisfaction of Krishna. Therefore, he is steady both in success and in failure. These signs are visible when one is fully in transcendental knowledge. It's a very high bar, the assembly of devotees to reach, but we do strive. We strive and we depend upon the mercy of devotees. Therefore, we take association of devotees. Therefore, we listen to classes in the line of discipline succession from authority. We read through Prabhupada's purports because we are trying, we are endeavoring to reach a certain level in our Krishna consciousness. Okay, and then Prabhupada spoke about here about the dualities. And there's a nice verse, I think in chapter two that we covered previously where Krishna says, um, a sober person is not disturbed by the ever-changing summer and winter seasons. So it ties in with that verse as well. Okay, so we shall end here.
For next week, I've got this up on my screen. If everybody can see uh, some discussion points. You can do it at your leisure during the week. Um, you know, don't just read through those verses that's referenced here. The session is recorded, so you can always come back to the slide and uh, take a screenshot of the discussion points. Read through these verses. I'll try and understand it and give me your input. What do you think about it? The first one is in reference to uh, chapter 2, verse 21 and 27, right? Where the question is, is when is violence justified? When are you allow, allowed to be violent, in other words? And read it in relation to chapter 2, verses 21 and 27. You get your answers there. Discuss it. Even if you want to group up together during the week, you can do that and present it together, or one of you can present. Or if you're shy to present and talk, put it in the chat box, post it in the chat box, or even post it on WhatsApp to me if you, if you feel more comfortable with that. But try and read it. It would be nice. Then the second question is, why did Krishna, who is all loving, incite Arjuna to walk? To walk? So in other words, why did Krishna encourage Arjuna to fight this war if he is all loving? Merciful Lord. So why did he do that? And there you can refer to Prabhupada's purports also in chapter 2, um, verses 6 to 11. Read through those purports. Right? So how are the general principles drawn from Arjuna's dilemma? How are those general principles relevant to your own practice of Krishna consciousness? So Arjuna was experiencing a dilemma, in other words. We too experience dilemmas in our practice of Krishna consciousness, in our practice of God consciousness. In our practice of devotional life, in other words. So how can you draw that uh, comparison? Look at Arjuna's dilemma, and now look at our dilemma, and read those purports 6 to 11 in chapter 2. Read through it and see what you come up with. No pressure on anybody, but if you'd like to, it will be very nice for your own benefit, for your own knowledge. And for all our knowledges, even mine, I can also learn something from your discussion sessions. And I'd like that. Okay, so let's stop here. I think we'll stop the recording. I thank everybody for joining. We'll stop the recording and do a brief discussion and then it should be pronounced. Hare Krishna.